Hi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever it is that you're looking at this, Pastor Doug in this new environment of our computer. Uh, God's the Lord be with you as we start our worship. Uh, I, you are seeing this and we have just met with the council and decided uh, to move out of the in-person in -person format for worship and go to virtual. And so here we are with a virtual service, which is happening right now. And, well, what happened? God is present here with me, there with you. Isn't that great? Listen, I know that we are concerned and anxious and worried, and there are many things uh, on the plate. We'll talk about that in a minute. And for the second time, uh, St. Andrew's Lutheran needs to suspend our in-person worship through no fault of our own. This is not the fault of the council, the city of Speedway, the pastor, the synod. It's no one's fault. We are doing this, and, and what you hear often about these kinds of decisions is this is being done, um, you know, for caution's sake, for uh, safety's sake, and to be able to, uh, you know, kind of have an abundance of caution in play here because of this coronavirus and the increase in our state. All you need to do is go to the news and you will see uh, the latest outbreak within the state of Indiana and what that means for us. So we're going to suspend in-person worship and go virtual now until probably uh, the early middle part of January. We will keep you posted. And friends, I call on you to do your half, your share. I need you to open up your emails to read everything, watch the videos for worship uh, with your family of faith. You can send these on to somewhere else if you'd like, uh, no charge. And um, to be uh, you know, in touch with each other too. There's no reason why uh, one cannot call another. Your shepherds will be calling you uh, and you then can in turn call others that you know in the congregation to encourage each other in fact, let's make a covenant, you and I, that we touch base each week with each other. And I'm going to personally go through the directory every, you know, Sunday afternoon or Monday or something like that and make calls to everybody to check in and stay in touch. And I can still do a home visit with communion if you like or whatever. Uh, I'm here for you. And that's the important thing uh, that you reach out to me if you have any need. And please remember, friends, that the church is not the building, 6118 Crawfordsville Road, right? The church is the people of God, you and me, the body of Christ. We are not the building. We are the body of Christ, and we're not closed in that regard. We've not stopped serving the Lord. Uh, we're working on something right now with some Wheeler Elementary families, I think, for Christmas. So... Um, we will continue to put those in front of you and just need for you to stay in touch with the announcements and all of that. For this Sunday that we're now recording for, pretend if you're not into the 22nd of November, it is the 22nd, and this is Christ the King Sunday. Christ the King, a, a festival service uh, celebrating Jesus Christ as King and that this is the last Sunday uh, in the church calendar. So this is kind of like New Year's Eve on some level. And uh, next week and the three Sundays following, we will be in the Advent season. Advent, which is uh, Latin for waiting. It's a reminder to wait upon the birth of Christ at Christmas. So this is Christ the King Sunday, and we hear the gospel lesson from Jesus today out of Matthew about judgment. In the end, the faithful are those who are served, are those who served Christ by ministering to those who are poor hungry, naked, sick, or estranged. In the first reading, God is the shepherd who seeks the lost, the weak, and the injured, and feeds them with justice. We gather this day to celebrate the reign of Christ and his victory over death, yet we await the consummation of all things yet to come. Acknowledging Christ as our merciful ruler, we go forth that his reign may be known in our loving words and in our loving deeds. Amen? Amen. Now, what's next is you're going to hear this prelude from Ed, thanks to our gifted editor, Kelly, and then you're going to come back to me for confession, 
and forgiveness. Any time of worship, friends, virtual or otherwise, we, we begin with our confession. And you're thinking to yourself, now, Pastor Doug, why is that? Well, because we're all sinners. And the way we do this is to admit that right out of the gate before we get our worship on, which is not the right language to use, but you get my point. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We're not faithful in using your gifts, and we forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another, and we're infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. The good news this morning, friends. Beloved, we are God's children. We are, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door for us. Through Jesus, we are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcomed. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and our strength to serve the world that you've made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading for this Sunday is taken from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. 
I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed and I will bind up the injured and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set them, I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, he shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Here ends the reading. Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. The second reading for this Sunday is taken from the first chapter of Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading. Just like in regular church, please stand for the reading of the gospel. I'm not going to stand, so you don't have to either. This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 25th chapter. Jesus said to those disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he'll sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he'll separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the goats from the sheep. And he'll put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats to the left. And the king will say to all those at the right, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And the righteous will answer the king, saying, Lord, when was it we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to eat? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and we visited you? And the king will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he'll say to those at the left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they'll answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? He'll answer then, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. 
and these will go into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Good morning, boys and girls. Or good afternoon or good evening. You all look so beautiful and handsome today. Thank you. Look what I have today, boys and girls. Isn't this beautiful? You're saying, Pastor Doug, why do you have a silver basket with these apples inside? Well, let me tell you. Thanks for asking. <laughs> This is a Proverbs Bible verse that says, a kind word is like apples, golden, is, I'm sorry, a kind word is like apples of gold in a basket of silver. A kind word is like apples of gold in a basket of silver. Boys and girls, Jesus is teaching today that whenever we do it to what we might think are the least of these, we do it unto the Lord. So really, it's about treating one another as though they're God. How about that? Well, that changed the world, wouldn't it? Treat each other as if they're Jesus, or we be like Jesus and treat each other like Jesus would, loving one another, encouraging, offering kind words like a, apples of gold in a basket of silver, and sharing love with one another and helping our neighbor. These are all things we can do for what might be called the least of these, or really anyone, when we do something kind to anyone, when we say something kind to anyone, we are doing it unto the Lord. Boys and girls, that's a good reminder today on this last Sunday in our church calendar where we celebrate Christ as King, not Burger King, boys and girls. No, no, no. Christ as King. And that's our celebration today. As our King, we are following the king, and the king urges us to be kind to one another and to make a lot of silver baskets with apples of gold in kind words and in kind deeds. Amen. Now, boys and girls, you can go back to your seat with your parents, behave, and uh, see, I don't have my notes for my joke today. Let me just see if I can pull this off. The uh, usher at the movie theater, uh, pre-pandemic, let's say, had gone to down the aisle to check, and he saw this man sprawled out over three or four seats. And he said to him, sir, you need to only take one seat. Sir, you know, trying to nudge the guy. Sir, you can only have one seat. He sprawled out over all three or four, over two rows. So he goes and gets his manager. And the manager of the movie theater comes and sees the guy sprawled out and says, sir, uh, you got to pick a chair. What, what, what's wrong? And the guy just gr groans and can't answer him. And he's sprawled out in the movie theater on these seats. So they call the police. The police come and question the man who's sprawled out over these seats. He sa they say, sir, you know, you can they've been telling you, you can only sit in one seat at the movie theater. Why are you all sprawled out like this? Tell us, uh, we're the police, tell us where you're from. And the man groans very softly, from the balcony. <laughs> I'm from the balcony. <laughs> oh, I can't tell, I'll never know if you laugh or not. I suppose you could text me if you, when you listen to this and th if you think that's funny. But guys, I... I uh, as I've said before, I love to watch television. I love occasionally to watch a movie. And uh, in 2010, this incredible movie came out called Unstoppable. Unstoppable. It featured Denzel Washington as an uh, engineer for a locomotive, a, a train, and hit an assistant played by Chris Pine. Chris Pine and Denzel Washington in 2010 movie, Unstoppable. And it's about a locomotive that falls into its own power by accident and roars out of the station with nobody on board. And it goes unstoppable, like a freight train barreling down through these towns and cities. And they're trying to figure out ways that they can stop it, to stop the train that has taken off. 
of its own power. And it's a great movie, suspense and energy and, and fast pace uh, as they try to track down this, this train and stop it from going out of control. I cannot help but make the, the uh, symbolism today, friends, of life as we know it. Isn't life as we know it driving us out of control? Isn't it driving us out of control, friends? Aren't you feeling a little bit out of control, if not a lot? Like a freight train, right? This coronavirus, the political age we live in, on down the list. And now our church suspends in-person in -person worship, and here we are virtually gathered again. How crazy is this? It can feel overwhelming. It can feel a lot of different things and all of that is okay. And so it's unstoppable on some level, isn't it? Just coming at us 100 miles an hour and not to mention Thanksgiving is Thursday. Hello, Thursday is Thanksgiving. Did anybody see November? Did anybody see November? Is October really done? It's crazy, isn't it? And in 33 days, I think, or so, we're going to have Christmas. Christmas in 33 days. And it's coming fast, like a freight train, friends. And it's going to be different, right? This whole year has been so different on so many levels for all of us. And here we are once again, sitting in the middle of that difference, in virtual worship at St. Andrew's Lutheran Church, November 22nd, 2020. It's crazy, isn't it? And so now, you know, what do we do uh, about this crazy year, right? Here, here we are at the end of the church calendar. This is Christ the King Sunday, which marks the kind of like New Year's Eve of the church. And you're like, Pastor Doug, love the church calendar. Help me understand it. That's a great question. Good question, whoever you are. Christ the King Sunday marks the end of our church calendar. We begin in Advent, don't we? We always begin with Advent. Next Sunday and the three after that, we'll be marking the Sundays in Advent. And uh, you know what? It's really hard to do this and look at yourself in a reflection. And here I see my mustache looks really gray. You know, it used to be salt and pepper. And now it's all, it's mostly salt, this glowing piece right here. I digress, don't I? So Advent begins our church calendar year, and the seasons of the church calendar help us move through the life of Christ. The seasons of the church calendar help us move through the life of Christ. I'm not sure why I'm doing this. Maybe it's the train analogy. <laughs> but it helps us. Advent is a Latin word means waiting. We're waiting again on the birth of Christ at Christmas. And we'll have two weeks, I think, or so of Christmas. And then we'll move into Epiphany. Epiphany is not a word we use very often. It's the manifestation of Christ. We're going to see his ministry on the streets, as it were, as it were, and, and partake in that in a variety of ways in Epiphany. We'll have a festival Sunday or two in there, Transfiguration of Our Lord, I think, concludes Epiphany and leads us into Lent, and we'll do six weeks of Lent, and then we go into the Easter season. Lent helps us remember the death of Christ. As we do that, we're all familiar with Lent, going over six weeks, but then we go into the rest of the story, into Easter, when Jesus defeats death and rises again. And then 50 days later, he blows the Holy Spirit out onto the people, the, the fresh breath of Christ, and the Pentecost season begins and will take us through the summer and into the fall, as you know. The long green season, the ordinary season. And so today in our gospel lesson, Jesus is talking about separation of goats and sheep. But really the emphasis is on whenever you've done this to the least of these, you've done it unto me. So friends, what I have heard throughout this pandemic, and I believe you have too, the one thing I've heard throughout the pandemic, and any time that one has stress, anxiety, worry, depression, 
the common theme is to do something, do something to help someone else. When we help someone else, we stop thinking about ourselves and we do as Christ would have us do, help someone else. There's no reason why we can't make a phone call. There's no reason why you can't call your friends at church and talk to them. Uh, let's covenant to talk to each other every week, right? I'll try to make calls through the directory every week to touch base with all of you and you do the same. Not everybody, but call the ones that you know. Drop notes in the mail, Christmas cards, Thanksgiving cards. Um, you know, somebody that you know is without some food, take it over in a safe way. I mean, you know how this works. There's millions of things that we can do and everybody can do something. And my point is that when life comes at you like a freight train, the encouragement from our Lord today is when you do something for anybody, you're doing it onto me. You are doing it onto me. I don't know about you, but this King, Jesus, I want to serve. And I believe you do too. And in serving Christ, we serve one another in all kinds of ways. And so we want to focus on that. And it reminded me of an interview I saw once about a, a woman who had gone to over 100 years of age. And she was interviewed by one of those magazines because all of us are curious what these centurions, is that the term? Centenarians, 100-year-old folks do or eat or drink or vitamins, etc. And she said, this woman who'd been interviewed, she's over 100, said, I've always had three things. She said, I've always had something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to. Something to do, someone to love, and something to look forward to kept this woman in her life going until well beyond 100. We have something to do, don't we? The Lord's work. We are the hands and feet of the Lord. We are. And so we do that which we can do. All of us gifted differently, all of us different passions and desires, but we do it together as the body of Christ. So we have something to do. We have someone to love, don't we? I hope and I pray that we all have someone in our family that we can love, and maybe many people. This year it's gonna be different than ever before. Many people are not gonna have Thanksgiving like they used to. Many will not have Christmas like they used to, and it's very difficult, and I get it. And this is what I mean by the freight train of being overwhelmed by life. And so someone to love, whether you have somebody physically or not, you have somebody spiritually in loving the Lord. In fact, Jesus was asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and mind as you love yourself, as you love yourself. We're invited to love the Lord. We have the Lord's work to do. We have the Lord to love. And then this woman said she always had something to look forward to. And you and I can look forward to life eternal. We don't know how it's going to take place. We don't know the details and the logistics. The Bible's very clear. No one has seen, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind can conceive, says the Bible, what the Lord has prepared. But we look forward to it. We look forward to it with our faith. We look forward to it in faith. It's going to be different right now, friends. It's different right now as we have church virtually. I don't care for it. I know you do, probably don't either, but what can we do? We have to wear our masks. We have to be socially distant. We have to wash our hands. Look at this. I am going to need more hand sanitizer. I'm waiting because right now bottles of hand sanitizer are $30. But we have that going on and we have to do it. We have to do it. We can make it through this, right? We can make it through this. As the body of Christ, we will not give up. The pandemic does not have the last word. We will stay the course for the Lord. We have something to do, loving one another. We have something to look forward to, heaven. And we have someone to love who loves us so much that he gave his life for us. Died and rose again and defeated death forever. And that's what you and I live into as the body of Christ. In this movie, Unstoppable, I don't want to give it away, but it's a 10-year-old movie. But Denzel Washington and Chris Pine, as the main characters, end up taking their engine and going backwards to, to hook on to this speeding train and bring it to a stop. Now, that is thinking that doesn't, is not agreeable with the higher-ups of the train company, you'll see in the movie, Unstoppable. 
but they do it anyway. And Denzel, with his years of experience in, as his character, he understands how this works. And they go and they set the brakes and they do all these things. I don't want to take away from it any further, <clears throat> but highly recommend the movie Unstoppable. And do, going backwards after that, speeding train is against all the common norms. It's thinking outside the box. It's new, it's fresh, it's dynamic, it's no other choice. And in the same way, you and I need to be thinking outside the box. What are ways we can do church when we're not in church? <clears throat> what are the ways we can do church when we get back to church? I'm always about what's new, what's possible, because that's how God is, I believe. Fresh, awakened, and alert. And don't you know God knows what's going on in the world? And don't you know God promises to be with you and me? We hold on to that Christmas promise. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. And we will make it through this pandemic and the freight train of everyday living. Get off the tracks. Take some deep breaths. Watch a movie and stop watching the news and take care of yourself. And let me know how I can help in that regard. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, all of God's people said, <clears throat> amen. We are ready now for our Apostles' Creed. Let us say together our common Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry. Whoa, huh? Train, train our ears. Did you see that? Look at that. Where's it at? Train. I did not know that was going to say train when I came up with my unstoppable story. Huh? Look at that. Spiritual tie-in. Where were we? I digress. Uh, sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry and the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending division among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation, especially for our country today. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from symptoms of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pour out your gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. All God's people said, amen. For the peace, if you have anybody with you, we can do namaste. May the holy in me greet the holy in you. Namaste. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Namaste. Your offerings continue to be important. 
especially now that the church has a salary to pay for. And so we welcome you to give as God has given you. It's still the stewardship season winding down. Uh, welcome you to please fill out your card, your pledge card, if you haven't already. It helps <clears throat> us make out the budget for next year. Let us give thanks to God for the offerings and thank you. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We listen to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. Joined together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the place for you at the banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. Locate your communion elements and the body of Christ is given for you. <clears throat> and the blood of Christ is shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Friends, before the final blessing, I just want to thank the church council <clears throat> for spending some time last night in discussion and discernment about uh, the need for us to go virtual and suspend in-person worship. Lisa McKibben is con concluding her year with us as president, and so we thank Lisa for her leadership. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, Karen Hill, Karen Hill, there's a Kelly at Faith, but Karen Hill, Karen, has a birthday today, Sunday. Please call her or send something because she loves to hear from you. And then Phil Langholtz, our property guru, the guy putting up fabulous messages on the sign at my request, keeping that sign fresh every week. Thank you, Phil. Phil has a birthday next week as well. And we will still have Thanksgiving Eve service. It'll be virtual like this. And uh, so I invite you to still tune in Wednesday night at 630. Faith Formation will still gather 7 p.m. Sunday night. We're finishing the Fruits of the Spirit, and we'll be talking about self-control. Self-control. Join us tonight at 7. Follow the link that Kelly will send out. Anybody's welcome. You don't have to have read ahead of time. It's a one-hit wonder. Starting next week, we'll be looking at something for Advent. I have uh, a couple books left if you'd like to join us. It's not too late and no expense. But we will be looking at Advent and studying that over the next four weeks at Faith Formation at 7 p.m. on Sunday evenings. And you don't have to have this book. You can tune in and listen and contribute. We'd love to have you. And now receive this blessing. <laughs> I can't be liturgically correct. Anyway, 
May the God of all creation in whose image we're made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God bless you, friends. Stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. Stay blessed. All will be well.